Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a quick update. It's March 22nd and there's been a couple of developments over the last uh, 24 hours. So I just wanted to get out to you guys. Uh, the biggest one, I think, in my opinion, is they're saying that there's evidence that this is going to be a shield volcano. And what they're saying that that is, is it's a low profile volcano type that of the eruption has hardly been seen since the end of the ice age apparently now these volcanic eruptions indicate that the magnet flows up from a depth of around 17 to 20 kilometers and again because of all of the material that's coming up it's much more primitive than that's been seen before now also these types of eruptions are usually slow as we're seeing with this one but they can last for a long time and years can't be ruled out i mean it could go on for for years and so if you're looking to come take a look at this eruption there's there's a good chance that once travel starts coming back uh, around the world you can do that now saying the flow of magma is expected to be around five to ten cubic meters per second which you know i guess that's that's a lot i mean we're looking at you know all these live streams and it does look like there's quite a bit of change over over quite a relatively short period of time so it's very interesting that that's going on. Another piece of news that I am very excited about is they are saying now that they are opening up this closed road, which is close to where you would go to reach the eruption. They're going to open that a little bit more so that cars can park closer to where you need to be before you start taking the climb slash hike all the way to the eruption area. Now, not only are they adjusting the road, they're looking to build a parking lot so that people can park and not sort of impede traffic on this road. But they're also building a trail and setting markers so that people don't get lost as easily because there has been a lot of calls to the emergency numbers to come and rescue them because they got lost or various reasons. So this new path should help alleviate those lost people. But they're also saying too, the new route, you should be able to walk to the eruption in around an hour and a half, which is definitely better than the four hour time that it was taking people before when they had to walk uh, much further. But you can see here on the map exactly the location that they're looking or they are constructing this new path. So I'm really excited for that because hopefully tomorrow I will be able to go there tomorrow morning and take a look at the eruption myself. The only thing that might stop that from happening is the site was closed today for a number of reasons. One being the weather, because we've had a lot of storms here, a lot of fog, and it makes it very difficult in these storms to travel through this sort of mountainous off-road area to get there, and you could get lost. But another thing too is there's a lot of gas and a lot of poisonous gas that is coming up, and because this eruption is in a valley, that gas is kind of just settling there at the bottom. And they're saying that tomorrow, because the winds are also going to die down, that they might recommend or they have it closed. So they, they're not physically stopping people from what I know, but they're, they're, they close the area. And so tomorrow I might not be able to go if it's still too dangerous to go. And they're saying that the gases are still too, too poisonous, uh, too high of a, a level to be safe. And that's the, the main concern. But I think in the morning, it's going to be just windy enough. Not as windy as today, but windy enough that it should be safe. And then in the afternoon, I think, is what they're mostly worried about. But they might just close it for the whole day to stop people from going and sticking around while it gets worse and worse. The last piece of news that I thought was really amazing was this image I saw from space. It was a satellite photo that was taken of the eruption and you can see here this giant sort of fireball looking thing in this small piece of Iceland that, that's, you know, God, then we got this eruption. I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm thinking about the live streams and I'm thinking about all the people that are there and the size of everything. And it just sort of makes me feel, you know, we're just these little pawns on this planet. You know, we're not this big event and I look and even though everyone's saying that this eruption this volcano is a small one I'm looking at this image from space and it's this giant fireball there on the ground 
which is uh, it's really intimidating, but it's also really exciting. I really can't wait to go see it again once it's safe. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to share the space image because I thought it was really, really, really cool. And uh, yeah, thought you'd all enjoy that as well. So that was it. It's all the updates. Hopefully tomorrow I will have a video for you of the trek to the eruption. I'm hoping to record the entire thing. Although the walk is a bit long, so I'll probably cut that up into segments. And I was going to do a live feed, but again, as people re reminded me, even in the comments, the cell service is not 100%, so it would be possibly pretty difficult to do. So until tomorrow, hopefully we get the video to you. If you want to stay updated, just hit subscribe. If you like this video, hit the like. And if you have any comments, let me know more about these shield volcanoes because I don't... Wikipedia only has so much, but you know, maybe there's some, some good examples that you have. And that would be great if you can leave that in the comments as well. So looking forward to tomorrow, hopefully. And until next time, thanks for watching.